all the YouTube viewers and all the Facebook viewers. We pray that you had a wonderful Christmas. We pray that you had a wonderful New Year. And we are looking forward into looking into the Word of God uh, this second Sunday of, uh, of 2023. 2023. We're going to be reading from James 1, 2 through 8. James 1, 2 through 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith de develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of, a, of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all that he does. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and understanding of his word. As we are studying again, we continue to celebrate the new year. Last week we started talking about all the things that we should be doing the first of the year. And we should make sure that our priorities are straight. That's what we talked about. The first thing that should be on our list for the new year is a stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. We talked about three different things. We should make sure we guard our hearts. That is so important. Because what comes in will come out. <laughs> our mouth, our actions, whatever. We should guard our hearts. We should grow our habits. Good habits. The habits of of growing a relationship with Jesus Christ and many others. And then be on your best behavior. Those are th three very important things that God expects out of us. Today we're talking about developing our spiritual wisdom. Why is that so important? Because in our lives, as the kids and I talked about and we showed, we have a lot of choices. Moses talked about it, and it was very interesting what he said. He said, choose wisely, because within the covenant of God, there are blessings and curses. That's interesting, because even in some of the things that aren't bad, they won't be useful or helpful. The Bible also says you can choose, but not everything is helpful. So it's important that we choose wisely. We have decisions to make every single day. One of my favorite movies is Indiana Jones' movies. And you'll remember that one time he was looking for the Holy Grail. He finally made it to this room, remember? And it was full of cups, chalices, one of them was the right one. The rest of them were wrong. There was a guardian knight there, and he says, choose wisely, my friend. He says, choosing the wrong cup leads to death. Choosing the right cup leads to life. And we know that's just to show, but there's some wisdom in that statement. Choosing the right thing and choosing the wrong thing is very important for us to understand there is a right and a wrong. Choose wisely. So our question is simply this today, what is spiritual wisdom? What is spiritual wisdom? There's all kinds of knowledge out there. All kinds of things 
that appear to be very intelligent and knowledgeable, but if it doesn't lead to Christ, it's not the same. So let's look. What is spiritual wisdom? Number one, wisdom begins when we ask God to be our supply. As I said earlier, there's all kinds of supplies of wisdom. You can read all kinds of articles. You can go to all kinds of seminars. You can go all kinds of things. But if it's not God, then we are probably headed the wrong way. We must make sure that God is the supplier of our spiritual wisdom. Now, I want you to study a little bit with me. 1 Kings 3, 7 through 9. 1 Kings 3, 7 through 9. This is a very good scripture, and it says, this is Solomon. Solomon was David's son, and he's now going to be the king of Israel. And that's what he says. Now, Lord my God, you have made me your servant king in place of my father David. But I am a, only a little child. I do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people who have chosen. You have chosen a great people. Too numerous to count or number. So what is Solomon doing? He's asking God to help him, to lead him, to guide him, and direct him in his duties. He says, I'm but a child. He wasn't a child. He was a grown man. But as far as knowing what to do, he was like a child. Now this pleased God very, very much. Why was it so pleasing to him? You have to go back to verse, uh, verse 5 to see. Do we have verse 5? At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. And it goes on to say, and I will give it to you. God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of everything, told this man, you can have anything you want. And what would you ask for? He says, you can have anything you want. But what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. He asked for discernment. That's why it pleased God so much. He could have had gold and any kind, anything he wanted. But he asked for wisdom, a discerning heart, in order to lead the people God had put him in charge of. He made the right decision. We can ask God for decisions and answers too. We just read it a few seconds ago. It said, ask, and he gladly gives you the answer. It may not come immediately, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, that we may have to look for it. But he gladly wants us to have the answers. Let's look at B. He asked for discernment to carry out his duties. Now, it's important that we understand this. We don't, he didn't ask God to do it for him. He didn't say, oh God, this is too hard for me. You make all the decisions. I'll sit here and eat the grapes. He said, guide me, direct me, that I can do it. And that's what God wants. We don't ask him to do our job for us because he wants us to do the job through us. And that's a big blessing for us. He wants us to do the jobs and the things that we're to do with him doing it through us. B. He asked God to give us we are to ask God to give us wisdom and the courage to do it. That's our last question, our question. Number two, wisdom is thinking and living as God designed us to live. The way God asks us, has created us to live. Look at A. God gives us what we need if we put his kingdom first. Solomon asked for wisdom, not wealth, but God. God gave him wealth and long life anyway. 
and we, we aren't expecting a lot of wealth when we ask God. But we know that God will give us whatever we need. He tells us that in our scriptures. Do we have Matthew 6, 31? Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? The Bible tells us that he will give us what, if, if we're living the life that we're to live, he will make sure we have everything more than above what we need. What a blessing that is. If we put his kingdom first and the righteousness first in our lives. We use his character for our life patterns. We have to use his character for our life patterns that we live and implement his kingdom values on earth. That's what we're supposed to do. So this leads us to a very big question. What are kingdom values? What are the kingdom values? God is the head of his kingdom. This is his kingdom. He's the head of it. If you want to be a part of his kingdom, if you want to benefit from his kingdom, then we are to operate by his rules. By his rules. Let me give you an example. Okay? If you go to a Nebraska football game, there will be 77,000 people, a sea of red there in that stadium. 70 some odd thousand will be there all dressed in red. Now over on the other side of that particular game was Baylor, much smaller school. They weren't wearing red. They were wearing green because that's their color. Now, when Baylor was cheering for their team, the people in red weren't cheering for their team, that team. The people in red weren't cheering when the people in green were. And the same the other way. When the people of red, the 77,000 were cheering, that little section over there in green wasn't cheering. They were cheering for their own team to victory. Christians are unique. We're different. We are here on earth to root and cheer for the cause of God. The other folks aren't necessarily cheering for us. In fact, they aren't. Baylor fans are, are, are not ashamed. Even though they're small in number, they're cheering for their team, and it's the same way with us. We cannot be ashamed to claim the team of God in Jesus Christ and set the sights on victory. As Christians, we cannot be ashamed of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that in several different places. In Romans, it talks about, I am not ashamed of the word of Christ and God because he is the creator of everything. The Bible says if you are ashamed of, of God's word, here on earth, he'll be, a, he'll be ashamed of you in heaven. We cannot be ashamed of the values of, that Jesus Christ asks us to, to do. Now, I'm not bragging about Ruth and I. I'm just telling you the truth. If you come over to visit Ruth and I, and you think that you're going to get in the refrigerator and find some Jack Daniels, you're wrong. Jack isn't there. There's no ashtrays in Ruthie's house. We don't allow a lot of cursing or, or cursing or bad language. It's, it's not because we're special or anything, but we don't want that in our house. We have to make the choices whether they're kingdom values or not. We have to set the standards. It comes down to this very simple thing, Joshua 24:15. Joshua 24:15. But if you're serving the Lord seems, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day 
whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in, those land, in whose lands you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Last one, number three. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge to everyday life. A, believing and not doubting. Believing and not doubting. Back into James. Or, or look at James 1 5. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask of God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But look at what 6 says. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Hmm. What does that mean? You and I have all seen on TV or paintings or in real life the huge waves of the sea crashing and billowing and, and restless. We talk about the restless seas subject to wind and gravity and tide. Doubt leaves a person unsettled and restless just like the waves. Many folks today, even Christians, aren't really sure that God's way is the best way. Maybe God's got some of it right. Maybe he's got some of it wrong. I don't particularly want to do this. I don't want to do that. So I will pick and choose what I want to do, and then I'll use the world's ways and how they say we should do it, whoever you're reading or listening to. And all that does is cause restlessness. It causes problems in our lives. And we don't have to wonder if that's true or not. All we have to do is read the papers. Look at our government has decided to pick this one and not that one. And, you know, it was a terrible tragedy Monday. And I wasn't planning to talk about this. But the football player, they got hurt. It was a tragedy. But you know what the greatest tragedy was? They just thought it was wonderful that people knelt and prayed. And not long ago they were telling us that we could, you know, we can't pray. What a double standard. It was no different than on 9-11. Uh, they talked about prayer in our nation. And you know, a few months later, nothing about Jesus Christ or God or prayers or anything. We want to be... If you don't want to be restless, unsettled, not sure about the path every day, then we need to look to the wisdom and trust God, and he will give it to you. B, we must have confidence he will align our desires with his purpose. Believe and not doubt. He doesn't always give us every little desire that we might want. But he gives us what we need. And we don't know what that is all the time. And we have faith in that. Relying and expecting that he will hear, that we will hear from God when we pray. It's simply saying that you don't just pray and hope that it might catch a hold that God might be listening that day, it means that you have great faith that he's listening, he's hearing it, and at some point in time, we will hear the answer, and it might not be the one we want. But we will hear the answer from God. A person who doubts is not completely convinced that God's way is best. And they have a restless, restless life. God wants you to know that his ways are accurate, that his ways are final, and his ways are the very best for you. Last question. Commit yourself wholeheartedly to seeking God's wisdom and trusting it. And then we should add and do it. 
In closing, the Bible tells us that when we're talking about wisdom, that we are to seek her. They call wisdom her. That we should seek her. As if we are seeking silver and hidden treasures. Now that's interesting. Why would they say we are to seek wisdom like silver and treasure? Well, what is silver and treasure? It's hidden. It's underground. You have to dig for it. It's not just laying on top of the ground in most cases where you can just pick it up. We have to dig for it. And the fact that the treasures are hidden is that it's not on top of the ground and it's not obvious to everyone. It's not obvious to everyone. Why would God make decisions available? Why wouldn't he make, excuse me, why would he not make the uh, decisions available to everyone? They just pick it up right off the top of the ground. Why wouldn't he do that? It's too valuable. His wisdom's too valuable. He doesn't want people to pick it up who doesn't, who's not intending to use it. He has placed wisdom as a hidden treasure underneath the ground for those who really desire to find the gold of God's wisdom. Those of us, there's a song that says, dig a little deeper in the ground. A religious, spiritual song. Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. And who doesn't mind digging and working for it? through reading and prayer and through relationship with God, those who are not afraid to dig and look for it, he will gladly give it to you. Search for it and use it. Only to be found by the people that have great faith in Jesus Christ and God. Enough to search for it and to use it. Ask God, and he is pleased to show you. Proverbs 2, 4 through 6. And if you look for it, as for silver, and search for it, as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. Amen. And amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there is so much false information out there in our world today. We have to be so careful for ourselves. We have to be so careful for our children, our families, and everyone that's around us. To make sure that we are listening to the word of God. If it's not aligned to God's word, then it's not God. Help us, O oh Lord, to seek that. Not only to, to search as we should all the time, searching for your truth. And in finding the truth, we will know what's not the truth. God is Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Anyone who would like to join our church or dedicate their lives to Christ may come forward during this hymn. And our hymn is...